Hi, this is the Tuesday evening, October 27th update on Zeta in the Gulf of Mexico. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service office for the best information for where you are. We're watching Zeta now moving northwestward into the central part of the Gulf of Mexico. The storm made landfall last night in the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula, where hurricane force winds were observed over a wide region, and this spent most of the night over the landmass and then emerged sometime this morning and is now moving out over the Gulf. And as expected, the storm did weaken during its passage over land and it had winds below hurricane strength when the last plane checked this morning. We are going to have a new plane uh, this evening that will sample how strong the storm is now. It's probably still just under or near hurricane intensity, but it's likely to start regaining strength overnight. And we learn a lot about a storm when it comes off of the Yucatan, because typically when storms move across this landmass, there's a range of possible things that can happen. A lot of the storm's future depends on how it's structured when it reemerges over water, and we learn a lot by seeing that. Some storms cross the Yucatan and get very broad and spread out, and it becomes very hard for them to become compact again and regain strength. In Zeta's case, it turns out that the uh, vortex is structured uh, rather tightly, and by tight, I mean that the fastest winds are fairly close to the center of circulation today, and they don't stay strong out to a great distance away from the center. So they're strong near the center and then decay. That structure allows very quick intensification once other conditions align. And what we saw earlier today is that uh, we had a circulation that was relatively devoid of thunderstorms. You can see that at the beginning of this loop. And then only just within the last several hours have we seen new thunderstorms billow up on the southern side and now on the northern side as well at the end of this loop. So now we're getting this curly shape uh, structure of thunderstorms. And this is a, a pretty normal process when a storm comes off of the landmass. It takes some time for the wind to swirl around above the ocean water and pick up new moisture and generate a new round of thunderstorms after crossing the landmass. And now we're seeing Zeta begin to recover and start to intensify once again. And given that its structure is a little bit better than computer models expected 24 hours ago, uh, it's possible that the storm gets a little bit stronger than was forecast 24 hours ago. So our expected intensity here as it approaches the U.S. might be ticking up a little bit in the forecast. As this comes northward, it won't be without obstacles here as it nears southeast Louisiana. We've talked about how wind shear will be increasing. If we look at the large-scale water vapor satellite imagery here, we'll see Zeta beginning to move up toward Louisiana, and we have this big bowling ball low moving across the desert southwest and into Texas, and there's very strong southwesterly flow on the east side of that, and that's going to be progressing eastward and uh, will be very close to Zeta at the time of landfall. This is going to cause wind shear to increase to moderate to high levels. And uh, during that time, the storm will likely start to suffer structurally as the shear will eventually become too much. And in addition, the water gets a little bit cooler here near the shelf off Louisiana. So the combination of cooler water, higher wind shear means that right as the storm is approaching landfall, we're likely to see it at least level off in intensity and stop intensifying in the final hours on approach. Unfortunately though, Zeta is also really uh, booking it across the Gulf and will be moving quickly at the time of landfall. Because of that, the short time that it spends over the cool water and under the high shear means that it won't have enough time to really respond to those hostile conditions and it won't have enough time to weaken appreciably prior to moving ashore. So whatever strength it is here, once it reaches its peak intensity, it won't be that much weaker than that, if at all, when it actually moves onto US shores. And it's become clear today that the storm could acquire just a little bit more strength uh, than was originally expected. This is the current NHC forecast and they have this coming in sometime Wednesday afternoon. This is the 1 p.m. Central Time forecast point where it's just offshore. You'd already have adverse conditions by that time, so you need to have preparations done tonight. By tomorrow morning, it's already going to start getting uh, more hazardous along the North Gulf Coast. And uh, the hurricane warnings are up here for southeastern Louisiana and Mississippi to the western coast of Alabama. Now, the NHC has maximum winds here of about 80 miles per hour at this forecast point, which would be just above hurricane intensity. And right now it has winds of 65. Now, the odds of this gaining more than 15 mile per hour of max wind during the next 12 hours are a little higher now that we see that the storm is structured in a healthy way. And so the ceiling on this has come up a little bit. I told you yesterday that a reasonable window of landfall intensity might have at the low end 
60 mile per hour max winds and at the high end maybe 90. Today that window has increased a little bit. It's probably unlikely to have winds any lower than 75 and it could have winds greater than 100 potentially in the worst case if this does strengthen a lot overnight tonight and tomorrow morning. Given that it's structured this well we can see how tight this is rotating and even as I'm making this video we can see the deep convection beginning to blossom and you can immediately see what could become the eye again as an eye wall tries to form here around the center. These are all signs that we're likely to see robust strengthening tonight. So you should be prepared for that worst case that we could be dealing with even a category two hurricane now as this comes up towards Southeast Louisiana. Now, as far as the track goes, this is fairly confident now this is moving quickly and there's a very narrow corridor of locations where the eye could move. There's always a fudge factor, but this is coming into Southeastern Louisiana, no doubts about that. But it's also going to be moving quickly into parts of Mississippi and Alabama. And keep in mind that the storm is expected to be moving quite quickly. And for that reason, the wind won't have a lot of time to decay after this moves on shore. So it might move inland and and even in Mississippi and Alabama, you could see winds gusting close to hurricane force, even well away from the coast. So this is not a event that is confined to the coast, and we may even get inland hurricane warnings uh, in here. This map will not show you that. The red is only the coastal warnings. You may have warnings extending even inland along the track. So keep that in mind. Also remember the northeastern movement means that the eye wall may not even be that far away here from places like Mobile, especially if the center is moving along the eastern side of that cone. So you could still get a direct impact from the eye wall in places like coastal Alabama. We're not really expecting a direct hit from the inner core in western Florida right now, but you will be on the so-called dirty side of the storm where it's on the east side with the strongest southerly wind and also the worst storm surge on that side. And a tropical storm warning is up for the extreme western Florida panhandle. But it's not all about the wind, of course, and we do have other hazards from storm surge where, again, near and especially east of the landfall point, we're going to have all the southerly wind getting pushed onshore pushing ocean water onto the coastline and flood prone areas we will see water rises of several feet perhaps as high as eight feet here in mississippi and then several feet over a broad area even as far east as the big bend of florida well outside the zone of dangerous wind but still inside the zone of dangerous flooding conditions so be aware of that and follow mandatory evacuation orders if one is issued for your location we're also of course going to be watching for rainfall but as the storm is moving quickly hopefully not too much but you can always get uh, several inches of rain in a very short period of time and flash flooding will be a concern as with any landfalling hurricane especially near the center where the eye wall will drop the heaviest amounts over portions of louisiana mississippi and alabama and we'll also be watching for the potential for tornadoes as the storm moves up like this on the right hand side there will be elevated risk in those spiral bands which is typical of a hurricane making landfall on that right hand side especially ahead of the storm even before the landfall time occurs, you could get some tornadoes in those outer bands out ahead of the storm. So stay tuned to your weather radio and your phone and be ready for all these hazards. Again, potentially a strengthening hurricane tonight and tomorrow, and we'll be watching to see exactly how strong it is, but just be prepared for the potential for winds that could even approach 100 miles per hour here in southeast Louisiana. We'll see how things go. That's it for now. Be prepared and stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.